how to market a traditional business. Guys, Kim Barrett here from Your Social Voice and today this is a follow-up uh, from the last video that we did around limitations of small businesses and or traditional businesses I should say. Now I want to look at, for example, if I was to work with a cafe like this one, a traditional business, how would I market it? All right, so there's a couple of different angles I want you to think about. First of all, first of all, why would you want to market a traditional business? Why is it important to do it? Now, of course, you can rely on word of mouth. You can rely on people walking by. You can rely on all these things to grow your business. However, like I mentioned in the previous video, they are not scalable, right? It's not something that you can turn a button on and up, up it goes and away it goes. So we really want to make sure that we have something that is scalable that you control. I liken it to having a tap because if you can have a tap in your business where you can literally just turn it on and business and people flow through, I think that is super, super powerful and I think it's super effective for business owners to have. So how would you build your tap, right? How would you build your pipeline? There's two things that I would recommend that you do to start off with. Now, number one is build out a content plan. Number two is build out a paid advertising plan. Right now, some people might go, Kim, this is a cafe. Why would, what sort of content would you be doing? Now, there's a couple of categories of what I would recommend that you would look at. So, for example, number one is about like about us. If you imagine you've got a website, right? They are all really great pillars and strong pillars for identifying what sort of content you should be doing. So, if you look at ideally having about us, who the people are, what products and services we have, um, what are the coffees that we have, who are the people that come along, right? There's all people here, it's a buzzing environment and that is really what you want to have and you want to showcase because you don't want to showcase a quiet little dingy corner cafe where no one comes, right? You want to showcase that there's people, it's exciting, There's you can uh, have drinks here, you can have coffee here, you can have lunch here, breakfast, whatever it is. You want to showcase, showcase all those different facets of the business. Right? And if you do that, number one, it's going to be super effective, but it brings people in. The number two is um, for, uh, I might, I'll say, especially for this location, I won't use the word I was going to use because it might get flagged by YouTube. Uh, but let's just say it's uh, food appreciation, right? Because most of the time cafes have really good looking cakes, pies, uh, food that they do, right? And we all love a good food image, right? And it's what attracts us and what attracts people to coming in. So especially if you're looking at rolling this out across Facebook and Instagram, um, I would highly recommend taking high quality pictures and look, do you have to get a professional in every single time to do it? No, but make sure that you take the photos in a professional manner. Make sure that you've got a nice setting around that you can see here. Something like this works really effectively where you've got a little plant, you've got cutlery, you've got salt, pepper, you've got the sugar, nice full glass of water, right? Uh, a coffee cup and you've got the food there. It makes for a good scene because what happens is people look at it and they liken it to being there. So you don't want to take things inside like a white or light box because really that's not natural looking. It doesn't look natural. It looks like you've done a food photo shoot. So ideally we want to do a photo shoot that highlights exactly what it's going to be like when someone comes in. And if you do that, that makes for really good quality content. Now, yes, you can um, turn those into little videos as well. So maybe you do a little bit of a time lapse of the chef preparing the food, um, putting together one of the, and plating something up. Again, it's something that I think would be super interesting and I would watch a short video of that. I would watch and entertain and, and admire that because I think it's really, really effective and it's something that is attractive for customers and clients. So if, once you start to put those different key areas together, especially if you have a changing rotating menu or you have changing rotating snacks, if you will, it makes for a really easy way to put content out each and every single day. And then also obviously covering off any other services if you rent out the whole place for uh, as a venue or anything like that, allowing people to capture and understand about that too makes for just superb content. So that's part one is really identifying and creating that, pa that uh, content plan across whether it be Facebook and social media, like Instagram as well. So then on the paid side of things, you want to put together a paid plan. Now, you can do a couple of different things where you can generate leads, you can generate inquiries, you can generate people interested in your services, but for a place like this, that would not really work, right? Because we don't really need that. You don't want to build a list of people that are opting in and calling them to come and get a coffee. It doesn't make sense. What we would do is have two prongs to this campaign. Number one would be a bot campaign, right? To build a big list of people when you can share, when you've got new uh, new things coming out, maybe you're doing Easter and there's Easter uh, hot cross buns on the menu, coffee specials, lunch specials, dinner specials. Let's just say that you know that 
every Thursday at lunchtime it's quiet, you do a Thursday lunchtime special that you promote out to that list of people, right? And you can bring them in by using a competition like I mentioned in the previous video before. And once you bring people into them, you've got a database of people that are loyal customers that you can always provide more information to, right? That's one side and one way you can get people in. The second way is to build a subscriber base of your already existing customers by giving them a scannable code, a QR code, that you can use inside of Facebook Messenger. A scannable code that you can use inside of Facebook Messenger works very, very, very well. Now, by doing that, you also build people that actually come in to your cafe into your place, into your location, uh, which is super powerful. And then lastly is awareness. Like I mentioned before, having that full scope of awareness where people can actually identify who you are, what you guys do, and it, you promote it to the local area will just absolutely go great guns. So if you do that, then how much do you spend on these things? Like, it's kind of how much is a piece of string. You could spend a dollar, you could spend a thousand dollars a day. There's just so many different variables that you can look at. Now, for me, I always recommend a minimum of any business doing $10 per day. You can spread that out across a couple of campaigns, it could only be on one. But by spending $10 a day, it means that really effectively, really easily, you're gonna have the best outcome possible, right? And I always find that by focusing on having that small amount, then it just works perfectly. And it's consistency that is king. Right, consistency is king and it consistently makes the biggest difference. And I highly recommend that you have, if you do put out an ad campaign, never turn it off unless you really need to. Worst case, especially if you're doing an awareness campaign, drop it to a dollar, right? And again, this is not from Facebook or from Instagram, but think about it. If you had someone who's paying rent, you're paying rent for a premises like this, and one, they're like, I'm just gonna stop paying rent for the month and I'll pay you next month. You don't treat them as well as someone who's always paying rent, right? So if someone's always paying, what happens is actually Facebook continues to optimize your ads and even if you're only spending a small amount, what you'll find is that you'll consistently get in, uh, inquiries, you'll consistently get reach for a lot cheaper than what you were getting before because you've committed, because you've paid for it long term. So me personally, I think it's the best thing and most affordable and effective way is to consistently have those awareness and engagement campaigns rolling out. Now, how would you go about setting them up? Well, number one, maybe you need to find help from someone if your business isn't really, um, I'll say tech savvy, right? If you haven't done these before, or watch some of our videos before, we've done about boosting posts, and we'll put a link to the boost post video. We'll put a link to that in the description for you. So you can jump in, you can check it out, and really find some good information about how to do this. Because again, if you can do this properly, it's something that you can almost, almost set and forget, especially if you have a very small audience size. So I highly recommend that you would set that up. Now guys, if you've liked what you've heard today, and hopefully you have, make sure you give me a little thumbs up symbol. Make sure you comment down below and share and let me know anything that you would like me to cover. If you're a traditional or small business or even if you're a big online business, let me know if there's anything I can do to share with you specifically. And as always, make sure that you subscribe so that you can see these videos before anyone else. Until next time guys, you've been awesome. I'm Kim Barrett. Adios.